good? It's your girl Kateria and you're here on Exposed TV and today we have the lovely, lovely fashion designer Josefa De Silva. Did I say it right? Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure. <laughs> Josefa De Silva, yes. Josefa De Silva. And she is an amazing fashion designer and we're going to learn all about her today. So tell us, where are you from? Um, well, I'm originally from um, West Africa, Cape Verde. If you don't know where that is, I'd like to mention it. It's in the coast of Africa. And um, yeah, that's where I came from. Nice. And um, did, were you born and raised there and um, came here? Or were you always from Bo um, living in Boston? Uh, no, I was actually born and raised in Cape Verde. I came when I was around 17, 18, actually. Was that, yeah, I was like turning 18 at the time. And is yeah. that where your fashion started or did it start when you were a little girl? Um, well, um, it started when I was like very young, um, around um, 12. I actually learned how to sew when I was like 12. Um, and the reason being is that uh, my grandmother knows how to sew, my, um, basically everybody. Every, so everybody in the <laughs> like house knew own, like yeah. how to sew clothes mm -hmm. and you picked after that. So yeah, yeah, and my mother also was a seamstress, kind of, well she didn't do it full time, but, and, but she, she made clothes for us. Yeah. You know, nice. little, yeah. So you always got to like wear clothes that wasn't anywhere else because your mom would do them. How did, did that inspire you to like follow those steps and make your own clothes? Um, I actually never appreciated like that. I just thought, oh, cool. I just know how to make clothing. <laughs> and I never um, thought about it like that until um, one day it just, you know, dawned on me. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm actually designing in my head. It's like every time I would see someone wearing something, I would just be like, oh, I could, you know, cut it this way. I could add this to it. I could, there's so many things I Is that how do. you, how you start your design? Uh, yeah, yeah. It starts yeah. from there, just looking, observing just different pieces. Right, yeah. I mean, the inspiration comes from all over. Right. Something that someone is wearing that it probably is ugly, but you just want to change it because... You know, there's potential there. Do you tend to focus on clothing or besides clothing, maybe accessories? I see like some nice things and I love those shades. Is this um, one of yeah. some of your pieces? Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, yeah, right there. I designed those and then um, we actually, um, me and my intern, and we kind of um, bedazzle it with the, these. Um, but we're, the glasses were um, designed by me and manufactured. Um, what, decided, what made you um, want to style it like that? Um, well, we just thought it, it would be fun to just play around with it and then put it on the runway and people actually love them, uh, yes. like this, and, um, so we just kept doing that. When did you start your run, um, doing runway, runway shows, um, get people, your, your designs, putting them in runway shows? Well, at UMass Boston, actually. Hey, UMass. <laughs> Um, that's, that's where I actually discovered that I wanted to be a fashion designer. Um, actually during African night, I'm pretty sure you're familiar yes. with African night, which, um, happens at UMass every year and it's a pretty big, big, uh, show. And I was on the, on the board, um, I was a vice president and we didn't have enough funds to like pay for a designer. So everyone is like, well, what are we going to do? Like everyone comes for the fashion. And um, I was like, well, I know how to sew. And they're looking at me like, what? I'm like, yeah, I know how to sew. <laughs> um, and after that, um, 
I put a look of, I think it was like 25 looks, and everyone absolutely oh, loved it. Yeah, it was even That's on the so school much. newspaper. And there, at, everyone is like, oh, the fashion designer. And I'm like, fashion designer? Hmm. That is a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I and never, that... like, I never thought about it that way. Cause, and yeah. I was like, oh my God, I'm actually designing this whole time. But I couldn't see it because uh, back home, there was no such thing as a fashion designer. Oh, really? It was like, you know, a dressmaker. Like you do that for a living, but you were not, you were not called a fashion designer. Or like you were not considered to be like, like a tailor, a right? Yeah, they would call it like a tailor yeah. more than or just like a, a dressmaker, dress, dressmaker, or something like that. So um, when I discovered that I could be a fashion designer, or than I was, I was given the title before I actually <laughs> knew that that's what I wanted to do. Um, yeah, and then, you know, I mean, I, I loved, I had a lot of passions. I, you know, I loved um, acting, I loved doing a bunch of stuff, dancing, <laughs> which I did, was getting a minor in dancing as well. Yeah. Um, but that was my calling. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like something that I'm actually truly passionate about. Um, and have through you high school, I always, like, I always wore high heels every single every day, day I wore. Day. Yeah. But when I went to college, it was like a little bit more different because no, I didn't actually have that time to yeah. dress up. Um, I mean, I did dress up. You, I was about to remember. say, you <laughs> were always styling every time. Right. So a little bit, we got a little bit of history. We yeah. went to school together yeah. and she was just always stylish. Like I personally, I gravitated to you because yeah. I said, wow, I love how she dressed. She like looks like life, like full, 100% life. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, I, yeah. I mean, I toned it down a lot because like in <laughs> high school, I just was, I would go crazy with it. Like I would just like, you know, wear funny things. Not funny, to me it was like very, you know, crazy. artistic, but like other people were just like, a lot of kids made fun of me and I was like, okay, whatever, I don't care. And now they you don't, know? now they're like, we need her peace. <laughs> Right, right, um, and and I was actually coming from a, like a different country too, mm -hmm. and you know, um, get into uh, merge and, and you know, trying to know get to know the culture a little bit. Mm -hmm. So like my fashion was definitely a little different, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so but it worked I, out. Yeah, it worked out. Um, when I when I um, I remember I had these white pants. I cut them. Um, because I thought they were, they were bell-bottom pants, and I thought they were not, you know, they were missing something. Missing so I just grab a pair of uh, scissors and I cut them from oh. the, from here to like, you know, down, um, to my, to my ankle or whatever. And everyone is like looking at me like, what is she wearing? And like, I'm like, oh, I look stylish. Yes, because you know. that's like, actually, I, yeah, that's, that's definitely a style because now everybody is doing the side leg, the side yeah, boot, it right? Yeah, like a huge <laughs> slit all the way over here mm -hmm. to like close to like my, your butt, butt. <laughs> like literally. I don't know what I was thinking, but I did that. Even though, you know, you were labeled as a fashion designer before you even thought of it, did you feel like you need to experience other things in the artistic world to pick what you want? Or after that fashion show and after they told you that, you were like, you know what, yup, I'm, I'm a fashion designer. This is where I want to continue. Yeah, well, yeah. after that, um, I felt like this is my calling. I'm not going <laughs> to do anything else. Um, and I just left school with one more class <laughs> to finish. And I just um, left and um, I was um, doing fashion shows everywhere. I was doing fashion shows um, related to African nights. Um, I was like, I, I went to New York, I went to, um, what was the place? Alabama. Is that how you say? Yeah, Alabama. <laughs> Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. Um, I, I just, yeah, I was everywhere. Um, how did that happen? Like, were people just like, I just, please. Yeah, I think I think 
what really happened was there was a lot of students from different places. So I guess when they go back to their, you know, to their um, uh, place and they'll be like, oh, well, there's this designer, Josefa da Silva, you should contact her. So I was getting like literally um, emails from like all over and I was getting paid too on top yeah. of that. And sometimes I would just, I would just wow. get like they would just book me a hotel and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the life. This like, is amazing. I want to do this like forever, <laughs> yes. you know. And it just kind of just happened so fast too. It happened really fast. How did it, fast, how did it happen so fast? Uh, like, for me, I felt like, well, I only actually been designing for uh, five, about six years now. And I have accomplished so much that I'm just like, whoa, is this supposed to be Is like this supposed to happen? I'm, because yeah, you see stories where someone's yeah. like, I've been doing it for 50 years. But, you know, right, or right. And sometimes you just, you, you know, you kind of in disbelief because you're like, is this really happening? Like I started like working with like um, my idols from when I grew up in Cape Verde, like working with like celebrities that I, they used to be my, you know, I watched them on TV See, like, when right. I was like little and being able to, to, to work with them was just like, oh my gosh, this is like really happening. Like am I, you know, dreaming or is this like reality? <laughs> um, like I said, everything happened like really, really fast. Um, and um, yeah, sometimes it felt like it, it wasn't, you know. And and, and really, you've had yeah. people from London have even know about you because yeah. I know that you um, worked with a model, a cool, and yeah. um, she showed us a magazine of your your, your work. Um, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. I, I'm can't remember the magazine, but when I seen it, I was yeah. like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. Well, there, there, there's, a, there, like I said, there's there's a lot. Everything just kind of <laughs> happened so quick. And, and the craziest thing is that a lot of people, a lot of my friends, like, um, that I haven't seen in a long time, like people from, from, from the mass, for instance, when they, you know, when they see me and they're like, oh my God. Like I, I saw this thing about you online and I couldn't <laughs> believe it was you. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, it's me. It's me. Um, yeah, I'm working a little right. hard there. But, <laughs> but um, I, I think I think another thing too, I was like, I was very, very excited and I just kept on, on going and um, and like I said, it's just my my thoughts just kept manifesting and everything that I that I really wanted and wished for was just like happening right in front of me. Like the whole process of you know manifestation was just like, whoa, this really really happens, you know? Just because I was sure. very, very um, enthusiastic about, you know, becoming that, you know, fashion designer that I was imagining in my head. And um, after that point on obviously. Were you imagining yeah. in your head you're obviously experiencing it, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, great. yeah, definitely. I feel yeah. like that's the power of the universe, you know what I mean? Like right, yeah. You, yeah. you put all this energy and love into something that yeah. you have and you're determined and you tell yourself, yeah. no, I'm going to do this, no, yeah. I want to do this, no, it's going to happen. Yeah, and it, it's, it's funny that you said that because, you know, the universe wants your success more than you do. And, and why do people fail to see that? You think art, especially, you know, because because we, well, I just actually talking to this, <laughs> talking to my intern about this. I'm very passionate about this. Um, it's because from very, you know, uh, we're like like a, you know, we're child, and yeah. our parents just like really telling us no all the time, and you know, you're you're conditioned to think that you can't do a lot of things because. The society is telling you that you have to have this kind of job in order to have money. Yeah, and, and that's you're, what you're afraid. And when you actually, um, you know, condition your mind to think a certain way, when you're actually little, imagine when you're older how, how, how difficult it would be to, you know, to be able to say, oh, I'm today, I'm, you know, I'm a very powerful, powerful being. I can do whatever it is that I want to do. 
in some cultures, uh, you know, kids are, you know, actually uh, taught to believe in themselves, to believe that they can do anything that they want to do. And if you actually being taught that, then when you grow up and you're like, oh my God, I can do anything. Nobody can tell me no. Nobody yeah. can tell me that I can't do this. But, I, you know, in, in this, you know, where we at right now, it's, know, right? it's a different story. It's a different story. And your thoughts become reality. Yeah. I mean, you know that I mean? is like, the truth. That in, in you also have to be very uh, persistent. You really have to go for what you want. And I understand it's not something, it's not easy. No. It's not easy to, 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 to do. I left uh, UMass and then I later on was like, I don't want to work for anybody else. I left and Bank that of was... America to start my own company because I believed in it so much How that was... people were like, you crazy? Like my mother is like, you have a child. You know that, right? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I know they I'm start putting it. in all of these yeah, things I'm doing, in I'm... the table and you're like, and I sometimes yeah. like, is this to scare me yeah. or? And I'm like, I'm doing it for her actually. Yeah. And myself, mostly for her because I really want her to see that I can do this. And she's, you know, I'm a living proof because now she's like, she got like, she's working for the first time and she has like the best she has a dream job oh, at yeah. 16. you, you know? know what i so. that definitely like i feel like you know all of your success definitely she looked up to you and she's yeah. like wow my mom showed yeah. me that it's possible i not did. told and me I, that I, showed I, literally I, showed I, me i did i did i i actually showed her and i was um talking to her earlier saying that I'm just, I'm there as a guidance. I was, I'm there as a guidance. I was, ever since she was little, I've never told her what to do. This might be a shocking thing. Because you're like, it oh, is, you're, you're a parent, parent and yeah, you, parents can't, you don't you tell your do. kid what to do. No, I'm there to guide her, to tell her that she can do whatever it is that she wants to do, as long as she believes in herself and um, she can get anything done um, and that she's a magical being she's powerful she's more powerful than anything so um, that's what I teach her I don't really tell her what to do that's amazing. yeah it's amazing and in telling what to do like what I mean I know no one told you to open a store you opened it yourself what like, I guess my question is, were you scared when you were having those thoughts? And was there a point where you thought it wasn't gonna happen? Well, um, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I wasn't um, a little bit scared that um, things might work out and or may not. But, you know, I... I really was um, thinking uh, I have to take risks. Oh, you know what I mean? So like, hard to take risks. Yeah, I know. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very, it's it's very hard. But I, like I said, I just had to like clear my mind and, and really focus on what it is that I wanted to do, which was work for myself, become a, a very successful fashion designer. And that's what I was focusing on. I wanted to like focus all my my my, my thoughts and and you know everything that I was doing was like um, surrounding that very specific thought and focus. Like, oh my gosh, this is what I need to focus on. This is what I want to become. So in order for me to become that, then my focus needs to be this way. And not so much, you know, That's I couldn't That's good that you've seen that because a lot yeah. of people will get confused and will stay stuck on something that doesn't progress. And that yeah. obviously, you know, you do things differently. You actually think about it and see how it can progress as opposed to like just doing, right. you know, right. a lot of yeah. people are just doing things and not really focusing on the future of it. Yeah. And yeah. How did you start, like, did the store ever look like this, or did it start off, like, just a floor plan? Like, just... 
Um, well, okay. the, the store. Because this store is amazing. Thank you. Amazing, beautiful, styled. You can tell it's fashion already. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, the, the, the place was just a big empty space. Empty. Like, there was really nothing here. So um, I sort of like, you know, design it and just have the dressing rooms and everything um, designed to my liking. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah, it, w it was not easy. And obviously, like, nothing is ever easy. No, nothing is ever to, like, easy. Just, you know, go, go with it. But, um, yeah, I'm glad you like the store. Oh, I love this store. <laughs> I love it. It's my first time coming. Yeah. I love it. And talking about more love, can you just tell me a little bit about what you are wearing today? And mm -hmm. um, did you put it together? Did you design it? Obviously, <laughs> yeah, well, this is actually part of my new collection. Ooh, yes, new collection. Which is like, Exclusive. Yeah, yeah it's like <laughs> denim collection. Um, and I'm super excited yes. about, I'm super excited about this because I, um, what inspired this collection was like a trip to Japan, which I Wow, how long were you in Japan for? I loved. Um, I was there for like a week. A week? Yeah. Yeah, and oh my gosh, the fashion there. It's like I was like high at all times. <laughs> like, I they saw had really nice oh, fashion. So uh, amazing, amazing. Like, I went to this place called um, Harajuku. Okay. So, Harajuku is um, oh my god, there's like girls dressed in everything that you could possibly imagine. And it's just everyone is like styled differently. There's like, you know, thousands of different styles, and you're just like, oh my god, you guys in Japan don't play. Like, I was so, so they were inspired. they were hard. They went hard. Mm -hmm. I was like very inspired about, you know. And then when you came that, back from Japan, did you get on it real yeah. quick and was like, let me just start this denim collection? Well, I was actually already, you know. Um, I was actually designing the collection before I went. But when I got back, I was like, I'm taking this to a different direction. Yeah, which I started like doing everything, mm -hmm. you know, all over again in the sense. Um, and then I, I love it. I love it even more just because I got so inspired by what Japan had to offer in, in terms of like fashion. So it's it's very it's something that I actually never done before. I'm usually like mostly like doing gowns, doing like you know very you know, couture stuff. Couture, I'm very, yeah. So this is like kind of like something that I've actually like a different not, element. Yeah, a different element. It's not really. Yeah, it's kind of. Are very, you are you yeah. enjoying the experience? Yeah, 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 very much so. I absolutely love it. I think I every second of it. Yeah. <laughs> For That's sure. amazing, and honestly, yeah. I, I see the passion in your eyes. And mostly, you see the passion in the clothes. You you could, yeah. I, I felt, and this is, might be a little crazy, but like, I'll feel like clothes, and I'll feel yeah. like how much it, you took to, to do it. You, you feel it. Yeah. And this piece is amazing. Look at this sexy bitch right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I love this. And this is inspired yeah. for your denim collection, right? Mm -hmm. That is. Nice, that nice. Is. That is, that's very much so the latest collection, mm -hmm. which is the denim one. Well, yeah. Josepha, you need to tell everyone where they can find you, follow you, and obviously come to this amazing store to just like be in a fairy tale and shop around because literally that's how I felt when I walked in. So please tell everyone and your fans because you know you got them, girl. You know you yes. got them. I'm a fan. <laughs> you know you got them. So where can they find you? Well, um, you can find me on IG, Instagram, at Josefa, J-O-S-E-F-A, underscore D-A, underscore S-I-L-V-A. I'm also on Facebook as Josefa Da Silva. Um, and, of course, you can come to my showroom in Hyde Park, um, and that is um, the address is 1225 River Street in Hyde Park, Mass. Again, the address um, is 1225 <laughs> River Street in Hyde Park. And there you go. You got Josefa. She's amazing. Please come to her store. And 
like you will not be disappointed you definitely will be disappointed and follow her her hustle and in the way she gravitates to her, to her pieces because I definitely see your personality in them and once you get to know Josefa you'll see the per the passion and the personality in the clothes and resemble it resembles her Thank so you. there you go you're here with Kateria on Exposed TV and you know what I'm gonna end this with a little bit of sexy fashion you know I've been eyeballing these for a while <laughs> so there you go Exposed <laughs> 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 and Matt, the cinematographer, is going to kill me. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> he going to kill me today. <laughs> <laughs>